Greetings. My name is Kyle Hart. I'm a senior solutions architect with Amazon Web Services, and thanks for joining us for the management tools session of our reInvent Recap series. So as you can probably expect from the title, we're going to talk about the new management tools and capabilities announcements from reInvent this year. And I've got several. We're going to start off with, with one that actually came out a few months before reInvent, but I think it's got particular interest to a number of our federal customers, and that's Systems Manager Session Manager. Next, we'll talk about some of the new announcements in CloudWatch with CloudWatch Logs Insights and Automatic Dashboards. And then we'll talk about multi-account management capabilities with what was what announced as AWS Control Tower and will release later this year. Uh, and then we have License Manager and we'll wrap things up with a discussion of the AWS Well-Architected tool that's now available in the AWS console. So first off, we're going to jump into Systems Manager Session Manager. Systems Manager Session Manager is a capability that uses the AWS Systems Manager agent that's installed by default on Amazon Linux and Windows provided by AWS. And you can install it on a number of other operating systems as well. And Session Manager gives you a, an interactive uh, web console based access to the command line of, of your EC2 managed instance. So from, the, from your browser in the AWS console, authenticated as an IAM user, uh, to a machine that's configured with the Systems Manager client. And that machine would need to have an IAM role attached to that EC2 instance to allow the machine to talk to the Systems Manager service. You can then authenticate and get command line access directly from your web browser. So previously, customers may have opened up, uh, opened up security groups, may have attached an internet great way to attach to a bastion host to then give them uh, a jump box capability to manage machines within their environment, within their VPC, that's no longer necessary with Session Manager. With Session Manager, you can connect directly in from a web browser on a properly, man or in a properly managed instance. So here's an example of what that looked like. It's a screenshot of, of a web browser that is connected to the AWS console. And in this particular case, I'm running the top command on a Linux instance. I've got full interactive CLI administration of this host through that web browser. Every activity is logged. Uh, you can go back and review the logs for, for that privileged level of access. And of course, my authentication was, was through my user permissions uh, authenticated to the AWS web console, either with an IAM user or a federated user. So a great capability. Uh, please check it out. It's, it, I think it's got tremendous potential for a number of our federal customers. So next up is CloudWatch Logs Insights. So CloudWatch Logs Insights was really meant to help customers dive deep into their logs and extract knowledge from all the information that's been captured in those CloudWatch Logs. A number of AWS services log to CloudWatch natively. Uh, Lambda invocations and functions log to CloudWatch. You may have VPC flow logs set up. Those logs go into log groups that are stored in CloudWatch. You may be sending log files from your EC2 hosts using the CloudWatch log agent into CloudWatch. And you can retain that information for, for a period of time for audit purposes. But, but what we've intended to do with CloudWatch Logs Insights is to help customers go deep and, and hopefully resolve operational problems faster by extracting useful knowledge from the information in those CloudWatch Logs. You can connect the dots as you look at operational inst you know, issues within your environment. And of course, it's a full managed service on AWS. So it's CloudWatch Logs Insights is built on CloudWatch. And you can see on the slide here, an example of the scale of that CloudWatch service. On a monthly basis, CloudWatch is monitoring more than 800 trillion metric, metric observations, triggers more than 2 trillion events, and ingests more than 50 petabytes of logs. Now this is common across all customers. Your unique slice of that's probably much, much smaller. But with CloudWatch Logs, we hope to give you the ability to go deep and, and get more useful utility out of the information that you're storing and capturing on the platform. So here's just a reminder of what those CloudWatch logs look like. Screenshot reference example of a VPC flow log. And you can see the fields that we capture in a VPC flow log, version, account ID, uh, source IP address, destination IP address, port information, et cetera. But, but that's, that's logged information, that's great. But what can we extract from that that could be useful in our operational environment. 
So here's an example of the CloudWatch Logs Insights console. We've actually set it up with some pre-built sample queries. And if you see that sample queries button there in the middle of the slide, you can click on that and drop down. In this case, I'm showing a sample query of a VPC, that same VPC flow log, and I'm showing the top 20 source IP addresses with the highest number of rejected requests. So you can see on the, the right-hand column of that slide, it shows the fields that we've detected that, that CloudWatch Logs Insights has determined could be queryable fields within the log file. And then up at the top, you can generate your query instructions to dive deep on those logs. And again, we have a number of samples to help you get started to see the capability and experience the capability of, uh, of diving deep on those CloudWatch Logs. So that's just what it looks like. You can see the distribution up in the top right corner of, of my panel there. I'm on one hour, a one hour increment. So we've got a time slice from 0230 to 0325. Uh, and it's showing the rejected, the top rejected IP addresses detected in the VPC flow log. Uh, it's giving you that visibility based upon the query that we've uh, established in CloudWatch Logs Insights. And there's a number of other examples. Again, depending on the log file from your application that you're sending in, of course, you're going to have different results. But we've given you this ability to extract more useful information from your log files stored in CloudWatch Logs. So next up, also in the CloudWatch series, is CloudWatch Automatic Dashboards. So CloudWatch, as we just mentioned, it captures trillions of metrics on a monthly basis across customers using the service. Uh, and how can we display those metrics? How can customers visualize and use those? Uh, we've got a dashboard capability. It's been in CloudWatch for a long time, very powerful. But for some customers, it's been a little difficult to, to really go deep with dashboards and, and really make it simple. What we've done with CloudWatch Automatic Dashboards is set up a number of pre-built dashboards based on best practices to help customers visualize their environment and, and get, get going with the service a little bit faster. So these dashboards are smart. They're based on AWS to find best practices. We build them automatically. They're dynamic in the sense that as you, as you bring machines on in the environment, metrics from that machine will automatically show up in the dashboard. As machines and instances are terminated, those, those instances and those metrics are filtered out of the dashboard. And of course, you can then go deep and drill down on specific metrics uh, with the CloudWatch automatic dashboard. So here's an example of an EC2 dynamic self-updating CloudWatch automatic dashboard with the various metrics that, you know, we've, we're showing six here in the graph, the six metrics that we feel are, are most relevant to EC2 instances across your fleet of hosts, we surface those up automatically. And hopefully customers can drill into this and start using CloudWatch dashboards a little more now that we've created this capability to help them get started uh, across their environment a little easier. So next up is AWS Control Tower. This service was announced at reInvent. It's in private preview today and will release uh, in the upcoming future. And Control Tower is trying to solve the challenge of managing a multi-account environment. So many customers, as they, as they mature their workloads on AWS, they may start out with a single account, a single VPC, and they may, may segregate activities and workloads within AWS with separate subnets within a VPC. And then they realize the flexibility of multiple VPCs within the same account. They could branch out and segregate workloads either based on mission requirements, operational requirements, different departments in the organization, they can tag them separately. And at some point, organizations realize that they need multiple accounts, either for uh, managing the blast radius of administrative users, getting separate invoices for different departments or, or units within the organization. And so it's quite common, and it's, it's, a, it's a best practice, that customers will have multiple accounts to manage their workloads on AWS. But it can be a little bit complicated to manage multiple accounts within the environment. Uh, within an enterprise. And so over the past couple of years, we've come out with a number of services to help with this. Organizations is one where you can push down policies across a multiple account environment and enforce that permissions boundary. Uh, but we've also come out with Control Tower that builds on top of that, that not only assists with creating these accounts and, and reduce some of that complexity, but it also makes it, uh, makes it much easier to, to provision and manage these, these accounts within the environment. So with Control Tower, we, we make it a much simpler to deploy multiple accounts within your environment. We, we automate the creation of what's called an, an account landing zone. And this landing zone is set up with best practices 
that that as you bring on new accounts, they're connected to that landing zone. They've got the connectivity. They've got they've got the policies. Uh, we've got the enforcement of guardrails that can be placed on those accounts. So top level kind of deny if if you don't want to grant certain permissions to certain things or block you know block the ability to attach an internet gateway or create an internet gateway, for example. We can push these these best practice guardrails policies down, and then we'll create a dashboard of of your your multi-account managed environment so you can see the status of of settings and activity in sub accounts that are managed through the control tower service so you can see here some of the features and benefits that we're offering with control tower we're giving you that landing zone the ability to manage multiple accounts with aws organizations an account provisioning wizard almost like an account vending machine uh, is a is a is another term you may hear. Uh, we set up the best practice of central logging and in that multiple account configuration consistency. Uh, and with guardrails, of course, we push out to help you enforce and manage those best practices within accounts that are in your control tower managed environment. So moving further up the management stack of capabilities, uh, we've introduced AWS License Manager, and the intent of this service is really to to help customers manage third-party license agreements for licenses that are provisioned and assigned to hosts running within AWS or running on-premises in a hybrid environment. Uh, you can use the, the license manager capability with the systems manager management agent on on-premises hosts and, and use license manager to track license configuration for, for machines both in the cloud as well as on-premises. Uh, it's built in with other AWS services, and we'll, and we'll talk here in the next slide about some of the capabilities of how License Manager can go deep. So you can customize rules. Different software vendors are going to have different license terms, and you'll take the license terms and translate those into a license configuration. And they could be tracked by number of instances. They could be attract. They could be licenses could be tracked by the number of CPU cores. Uh, we help customers with that flexibility to define their license terms on a customized basis. Um, you can, of course, uh, run this in a monitoring mode where an administrator gets, report, gets reports after a certain threshold of licenses are consumed, or you can run this on a strict enforcement mode where machines will not launch if it would put an organization out of compliance with their licensing terms. So the steps to get started with License Manager, you define your licensing rules, you then, you can certainly run in monitoring mode for the first, you know, first period of time, uh, and then you can turn on full enforcement and, and track the usage of licenses across your environment. So here's an example of what a license configuration might look like. You'll have the text agreement of your license agreement with your, your software vendor, you then can translate those terms. Is it, is it license per core? How many licenses do you have? And do you want strict enforcement on these machines? And again, this is integrated across a number of AWS services. So uh, the systems manager can do a software inventory of your machines and, and find currently deployed licenses, decrement those from the quantity that you configure. And then as you add and deploy new instances from your golden AMI that has a license policy associated with that AMI, when you launch new instances at a certain point in time, they, may, they will fail to launch if it puts you out of license compliance. So again, a good way to, to track and, and uh, your usage and stay in compliance so you don't you know, run afoul of your, your third-party software license terms and, and potentially have a, a large unexpected true-up situation uh, at the end of the year. We've got a dashboard here that, that shows your license status across both the AWS environment, the hybrid environment. Uh, it's going to show the status based upon the quantity that you provision into AWS. Uh, it'll show the current status of those licenses on, on a simple dashboard option here. So lastly, the last big management service from reInvent that I wanted to, to highlight for our federal customers is the well-architected tool. A number of you may have been working with your AWS account team. They may have come on site and done a well-architected review in the past. We've taken that learning and that same capability, that same tool, and made it available in the AWS console for customers. And really what the well-architected tool is, the way to view it, is, is a tool that can help you self-assess uh, your, I'd say compliance, but self-assess 
your configuration with well-documented best practices that AWS has established from customer research and, 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 and experience running the cloud, uh, we've established a series of, this, of, of best practices encapsulated in what's called the well-architected framework. The well-architected tools, a series of questions, you can go in and assess your environment against that. There could be certain situations where there, there are very valid reasons to deviate from these established best practices, but you'd want to consciously understand why that's the case, and so we can help call that out for you. And really, it's intended to help customers uh, improve their architecture, stay consistent with their governance, and 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 run in a in a smooth operational fashion in the cloud. So the well-architected framework has five pillars: operational excellence, security, reliability performance efficiency and cost optimization. So some of the questions you'll get will be on security and logging practices within your environment. Uh, they could be on, on any sort of proactive monitoring or auto scaling capabilities, uh, usage of reserved instances to help, help drive some cost efficiencies, uh, et cetera. So these are some of the things you can run through. It's, it's a painless process. It takes, you know, might take an hour or so to run through and, and look at some of the questions in the tool and it will help generate um, both a kind of a benchmark as well as some proactive guidance and suggestions. It's also accompanied with the well-architected framework white paper that goes much deeper on a number of these, these operational considerations. So one final thought on the well-architected tool and the well-architected framework is that the well-architected framework helps architects build the most secure, high-performing, resilient, and efficient infrastructure possible. So with that, we thank you for your time. If you have any questions, want any follow-up, reach out to your, your account exec, reach out to your solutions architect, and, and they'd be happy to come in and go deeper on, on any of these topics.